Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In the Swabian Jura Mountains of southern Germany, there are four ancient cave sites that tell us so much about the Aurignacian culture, a people that lived in Ice Age Europe between 43,000 and 26,000 years ago. The caves include Hollenstein Stadel, where the Lion Man statue of my last video was discovered. We have Holfels, where the world's oldest Venus statuette was found. We have the cave of Geisenkrustel, and another called Vogelherd. Vogelherd is the subject of this video, because excavations uncovered a truly incredible array of animal figurines, and there really isn't another archaeological site in the world quite like it. Vogelherd is a Y-shaped floor plan, with three galleries that meet in the centre. A number of objects were found at this central location, although poor record keeping during the 1930s excavations means we know more about the layers from which the finds came from, and not the specific location inside the cave. The vast majority of Aurignacian animal figurines comes from this specific cave in Germany. A limestone Koss cave first excavated in the 1930s, a cave with a long history of occupation, with middle Paleolithic Neanderthal tools, as well as fragments of the upper jaw of a wild horse. But it's the discoveries from the upper Paleolithic that have made this site so archaeologically unique and important. Between 40,000 and 10,000 years ago, the cave saw frequent occupation with Aurignacian and Magdalenian deposits, but there are no signs of Gravettian, the people who came between the two cultures. From the Aurignacian period, we find hundreds of stone tools, scrapers, missile tips, and more. There are also a variety of stone, bone, and ivory artifacts, there is evidence of fireplaces, and several phases of occupation. Of all the archaeological finds, it's the collection known as the Vogelherd figurines that makes this site so famous and important. They are some of the world's oldest known works of figurative art, artifacts made from the ivory of woolly mammoths, and these are finely carved with exquisite detail. All of the animals must have had significance and importance in Ice Age Germany, likely related to survival and the practice of hunting. They could be related to rituals, cults and shamanistic practices, they could simply be children's toys, purely decorative, an artistic hobby for the people, we really can't know for sure. They are likely personal ornaments and mobile art, objects that people carried with them because of their small size. But the detail etched onto some of these figurines may be just as important as the overall animal shapes. Some of them have a cross-hatched pattern, there are also indentations and lines and so on. They could just be there to add more detail to the animals, portraying fur, spikes, spines, skin and so on or maybe they do have some other significance. Whatever their purpose or meaning, the animal figurines do seem to have a distinct style, and nobody can doubt that the Aurignacian people were a culture of artists. As well as ivory figurines, this small engraving of a mammoth is made on a bone pendant, and one figurine that may be a mammoth looks to have been made with sandstone. Many people look at the animals on the limestone pillars of Gebekli Tepe and wonder how hunter-gatherers had the skills to create such intricate iconography. Well, the finds from the Vogelherd cave show that it was very much in the human genes, because 20 to 30,000 years before Gebekli Tepe, we have these figurines that rival anything in pre-pottery Neolithic times. Although not exclusively, the majority of the animals depicted by the Aurignacians are powerful and aggressive creatures. Lions and mammoths, but also bisons and horses. But more recent excavations across the Swabian Jura Mountains have uncovered figurines of more peaceful animals, such as small mammals like hedgehogs and fish and waterfowl. So, the actual subject of the art doesn't seem to have a specific theme. 
They are mainly animals, but not a specific type. There was also this anthropomorphic figurine, similar to one found at True Magritte in Belgium. What we know from excavating the Swabian Jura Caves is that this region was a well populated site during the Ice Age, and when we look at the landscape, we can understand why. There are numerous valleys in the open highland, an area that would have been visibly rich in game, shelter and diverse raw materials, particularly Jurassic chert, and being hard and sharp, this was used in stone tool production. The region is also very close to the Danube, a key landmark that humans and animals likely followed as they migrated across Europe. But as well as animals, three sites in the Swabian Jura have also produced flutes, musical instruments made from the bones of vultures and swans, and also examples that were made from ivory. These are the same age as the animal figurines. One thing is for certain, the archaeological record of the Aurignacian culture shows a lot of variety and also a consistent excellence in quality. We find evidence of pigment and colour, we find animal figurines, we have the earliest Venus statuettes, the magnificent Lion Man, the incredible cave art of Chauvet, and also musical instruments. To end this video, I'll show you a gallery of pictures showing the animal figurines in fine detail from different angles and close up, whilst playing flute music over the top may be similar to what prehistoric humans would have listened to whilst carving these astonishing ornaments 30 to 40,000 years ago.
Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.